Well, God bless you. I am Dr. Joseph Walker right here at the Mount Zion Church, Nashville, Tennessee, and you're tuned in to Deeper Dive. This is a place where we grow in God's Word. I'm so excited to have you connected on today. Make no mistake about it, you're not tuned in by accident. If you found this YouTube channel, it's because God had a word for your life. We can't wait to get it to you. Listen, I am so excited because we're in a series living on and in purpose. It's going to bless your life. Let me tell you something. I want you to like, share, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, download the Mount Zion free app. You can get notes and things that can bless you. We hope you do that. I want you to do it. It's going to be a blessing. We're going to get right into this word, y'all, because I'm excited. You know I get geeked, but I want you to take a moment now and let's sow together. Let's give. Let's say to God, Lord, thank you for the privilege we have to be able to give generously to the work of the kingdom. To give your tithe, your offering, I pray you will sow generously as you do every single week. And for that, we say, God, you'll be glorified. So here, I want to pray over you now, pray over your gifts. Here you can give right here on the icons, and uh, we're going to get into this word. Father, thank you for the privilege we have right now to give, I pray, a blessing over every family. And I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get right into this today. This is part four. We're going to talk about the right person. Are you the right person for the job, for the purpose? Well, God chose you for it, and let's just lay it out. Let's make the case. There's a doctrine called predestination. Sometimes it's difficult for some people to grasp. You've heard me teach about it on numerous occasions. We naturally tend to think that those who are predestined are chosen because of some merit of their own. After all, that's how we tend to choose. For example, if you're picking a team in PE, everyone always chooses, I want the tallest or the fastest or the most athletic, the most popular, to be on your team. But the words translated predestined in the scripture ref references really help us understand a deeper meaning of the word. The Greek word, proizo, which carries the meaning of determining beforehand ordaining, deciding ahead of time. So predestination is God determining certain things to occur ahead of time. Whew! God determining certain things to happen before time. Before your grandmother met your grandfather, before your dad met your mom, God already had determined certain things to happen concerning you before all of that. Go figure. Before you were even born, God had a purpose for your life. You were born for a time that you were needed the most. Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. See, God's criterion for choosing is not based on us. 1 Corinthians 1, look at this, verse 26 to 30. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. I, I want to read this because it's important. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. The scripture says, for by grace you have 
been saved. Through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any of us should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, I want you to understand something. Your value matters to God. Understand your value to God and yourself. He constantly tells you the enemy creeps in your life and constantly tries to tell you, you're not good enough. You know God's angry with you. You can't do this thing. You know you can't do anything right. Have you ever had those thoughts, the enemy coming in? Do you know that those thoughts are not from God? His thoughts towards you are good. Again, I just shared it, man. I just shared this last week. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, y'all, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Those hateful words are from the enemy of your soul who's come to kill, steal, and destroy everything about you. The devil is a liar. John 10 and 10 says the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The devil wants you to be so focused on the hurt, the criticism, the derogatory comments that come your way that you miss what God has for your life. And that's why it's important for you to read the Word of God, put his thoughts in your mind. Let, let this Word be in your mind, right? Because every scripture you read contains God's truth and brings life and hope into your life. 1 Peter 2 and 9, you, I'm talking about you, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People may overlook you. They may reject you, but that's okay. The one who matters most chooses and accepts you. And you aren't randomly chosen either. Please understand Ephesians 2 and 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. When you start seeing yourself as handpicked by God, you start seeing yourself as valued, loved, created with purpose, your attitude will change. And when it does, your life will change too. You don't have to worry about getting even for all the wrong that's been done to you. I'm sure you've had your, your share of hurt and disappointments. I know I have. But God promises that he will pay you back double for your former shame. I love this, y'all. Isaiah 61 and 7. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. God will make the rest of your life twice as good <laughs> as it would have been if all that had not happened to you. Oh, boy, I want you to get ready because it gets better from here. Because you know something? I want to show you something of what it means to be elect and the chosen stone and chosen people and the interaction, the elect exiles. Let me help you understand what that means. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 through 10, coming to him as to a lively stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, it's talking about Jesus, precious. You also, meaning you and I, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, 
It is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes in him will by no means, here it is, be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word in which they were also appointed. But you are chosen, a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And once, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Y'all, this was an enormous encouragement for a tiny and persecuted minority in the vast sea of growing hostility among those who were being attacked. And I think it's important that you begin to realize who you are in him, man. Because when you begin to realize who you are in him, your faith is not on the basis of being chosen. It's the result of it. Let's lean in right here for a second. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, that he may give it to you. John 13 and 18 says, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. God chooses us to join him in his work in the world. That God is at work in the world and God chose you to be a part of it. I know, I, I, I think about my call all the time and how God chose me to be a part of something. I want you to look at this. Sometimes joining in what God is doing means I want to not do my thing, but I want to say, Lord, let me join you in what you're doing to make a bigger difference. See, when I do that, it never contradicts my character, but I'm in line with what God wants me to do. I'm in line with God's word. It's important to understand why Jesus spoke these words. He said, in his defense, and having healed an invalid man on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders claimed Jesus violated the law. But it wasn't the law. It was their law. Joining God, man, this is why you're the one. This is why you're chosen. This is why you know you are assigned to this thing, because you know how to get yourself out of the way. Personal agendas, human efforts will not be in the way of God's glory. There has to be an intentional effort to get yourself out of the way and say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Even Jesus never followed his own agenda, but he constantly aligned with the agenda of his father. If the son could do anything by himself, he, how could we ever possibly make true ministry happen on our own? Let me say it again. If the son of God could not do it on his own, he'd say, I'm doing this because my father has, allowed, has empowered me to do it. I'm doing the will of my father who sent me. Why do we consistently do things on our own? Jesus never followed his own agenda. He followed that of his father. So listen, I want to show you some benefits of living on and in purpose. I want you to really hear me. Because purpose is a sense of knowing 
that your life has meaning. Look at me. I don't care what happened to you. Your life has meaning, value, and importance. I don't care what trauma you've experienced. I don't care what setbacks you've had, what failures you've had. I don't care. God never gave up on the value and the promise that was on your life. And so when I begin to live in purpose, it means that I know, in fact, that my contribution to what God wants me to do in the world is going to make a positive impact. That's why the devil was trying to destroy you. That's why he was trying to kill you, because he knew God has something on your life. Having purpose means that the work that you're committed to serves humanity in a positive way. It is never self-serving. It is always to bless God and his people. So when I live purposely, it, it makes me happier, more content, more successful, more graceful, more resilient, more excited, because I know something in me has just come alive. Living on purpose will give you a sense of living like you've never had before and put you on the fast track to winning the game called life. There's a lot of benefits of doing this. You got to just step out there and trust God. That's meaningful work, man. I know money and fame and power, prestige is what the world wants and advancement. They all come secondary, though to the most powerful source on the planet, purpose. Once you get in purpose, once you seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness and all these things, they'll be added to you. Every successful person has a why that motivates them to get up in the morning. I tell people all the time, if your why doesn't make you cry, you got the wrong thing. So you got to make sure every success I have in my life is tied to the fact that I want to be where God wants me to be because I know God chose me. He could have chosen any better to do this. Accomplished people always attach their work to a cause that's bigger than themselves. What's your why? What's your cause? Your purpose is for something bigger than yourself, and purpose becomes a driving force that makes you successful. Purpose is the purest form of motivation there is. I'm telling you, when you understand that purpose and why you're placed on the planet, you don't have to say, well, I gotta, I just, I'm going to get drunk today because I need to, like, you know, motivate myself. I need, to, I need to go and just smoke up all this today to motivate myself. No, I'm motivated by what I realize God placed me on the planet to do, and he chose me. So knowing that means I'm never going to give up because I recognize there are other people depending on me, mouths to feed, customers to serve, fans to please, followers to inspire. It makes giving up impossible. So you got to have confidence in God. We live in a world where self-confidence is the phrase of the 21st century. There's so much about self-confidence and how important it is, and it is important. But as a Christian, do we really think we should be relying on ourselves instead of God? I want to leave this scripture with you, and I'm going to, man, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole wide world world in the Bible, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it or perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to stop searching, stop doubting, and I want you to hear me. You are the right person. God started something inside of you long before you knew it. And this entire series, we've been talking about how do you get in purpose? Are you in the right place? You know, are you in the right time? All these different things. But let me tell you something. You are the right person. And I just want you to walk it out and believe that. I know in my own life, I think about when God chose me and called me, he already had it predetermined what he wanted my life to be. That's why it's best to just fall in line with him let him direct your path. And I'm telling you, the safest place in the whole wide world, ladies and gentlemen, is in the will of God. So ask yourself, why am I doubting myself? Why am I that hard on myself? If God has placed this in my heart to do, if God has given me an itch I cannot scratch, it's just a passion I have, that means that God saw something in you. 
that everything you've gone through prepared you for a moment like this. Here's a word from your bishop. Now go get it. You hear me? Go get it now. Well, I thank God for you, man. What, what, a, what, a, what a time today. I'm grateful that you've joined me today, and I hope that this has blessed you. I really do, and I hope this entire series, I want you to go back and watch part one, two, three, and four. Check the entire series out right here on this YouTube channel, and let us know. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3. Let me know how this series blessed your life. Man, I just want you to be living on and in purpose. So here, I want to give you a chance to know the greatest decision you could ever make in your life is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's simple. Text the word salvation to 78228. Do that right now. We would love to connect with you. That's salvation at 78228. I want a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to rededicate my life. I want a church home. Whatever the case is, we're here for it. And we love you. We thank God. And until next time, I want you to keep staying tuned right here for more Word. We'll bring to you every single Wednesday, every single Sunday, and throughout the week. Thank you. Until then, be blessed.